2013, an NGO in Switzerland filed a report detailing how the Nigerian National Oil Corporation conspired with some Swiss oil trading companies and Nigerian traders to steal oil revenue through the sale of crude oil below the market value. This singular conspiracy cost Nigeria about $7 billion. It was by far the biggest of such fraud in Africa, lasting for close to 8 years. This fraud was carried out by certain foreign companies hired by NNPC employees. But how were they able to pull this off for so long without getting caught? You see, the alleged perpetrators used ship-to-ship -ship transfer of crude oil to create untraceable paperwork, made payments of subsidy money to ghost companies and non-existing importers, and they kept all the profits for themselves. This made Nigeria the only oil-producing nation selling 100% of its crude to private traders rather than market it itself to make profits. This report would start a wave of scandals that rocked the NNPC in the months that followed. Nine years on from that discovery in 2013, and nothing has changed except for the logo of the oil giant. This is a story about the Nigerian oil company, NNPC, the most corrupt organization in the world. By the mid-1960s, the Nigerian government began to consider ways to make more money from the resources being exploited by Western oil companies. Few months after the Biafran War, the government decided to nationalize the country's oil after buying stakes in these Western companies operating in the country. It was at this moment that General Yakubu Gowon created the Nigerian National Oil Corporation NNOC, with a decree in 1971. Its mission then was to participate in all aspects of petroleum including the exploration, production, refining, marketing, transportation and distribution. The corporation was also tasked with training indigenous workers, managing oil leases, even constructing pipelines and production of fertilizers. You see, this one organization was tasked with all of these responsibilities. But the political instability in the country in this period meant the stage was then set for the biggest corruption in the world to thrive. From the very beginning, the NNPC was set up to fail. It was attempting to manage a highly complex industry without adequate technical and financial resources. And these problems would go on to define it throughout history. The NNOC had limited powers as a public corporation. It could not borrow funds or dispose of assets without the specific approval of the guys in power. It was operating at the pleasure of whatever head of state the country had part time. In fact, the government was well represented on the NNOC's board. Of all the board members, only three representatives had special knowledge of the oil industry. So from the very beginning, an organization that was seen as crucial to the future prosperity of Nigeria was left in the hands of people who knew little about what they were doing. And to make it worse, it was subject to close government control. Six years later, as expected, the NNOC collapsed. The operating failures of the 1970s led to a huge national scandal known at the time as the 1980 Crude Oil Sales Tribunal. The investigations revealed that from 1975 to 1978, the NNOC had failed to collect 182.95 million barrels of equity share of oil being produced by Shell, Mobil, and Gulf, with potential revenue estimated to be in excess of $2 billion. Authorities claimed that the NNOC was unable to find buyers for its oil at the price it wanted. This was after paying the full share of operating costs to the producers. The investigations also revealed that the NNOC had not produced audited accounts since 1975. So when the scandal got so serious and Nigerians demanded answers, the government quickly changed the name of the organization from NNOC to NNPC. Guess who was Commissioner of Petroleum and Natural Resources at the time? The NNPC is the only body licensed to sell crude oil in Nigeria. Now, these crude oil sales are on a long-term basis and the same customers are often retained as long as they are doing well. When sale is made, invoices for the sales of crude oil are issued by the NNPC and payments against invoices are made into specific accounts of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, the Euro and North America in hard convertible currencies. Now, the NNPC has an account with the CBN called 
the NNPC crude oil sales account. This account is credited by the CBN whenever the NNPC makes invoice payments to the CBN's international accounts. I hope this makes sense because it was confusing for me at first. So whatever transaction, the CBN is very much aware because they are set up to receive these funds at least from the crude oil sales. After receiving these said funds, the NNPC is required to pay a certain proportion of it to the federal government account held with the CBN. But this whole process that was meant to guard against fraud and mismanagement gave rise to some of the biggest scandals in the history of the oil industry. Here's what I mean. On the 9th of December 2013, a letter from the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Sanusi Lamidu Sanusi, to the president of Nigeria, Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, surfaced in the news. This letter gave details of how the NNPC had failed to remit over $49.8 billion, which are believed to be proceeds of crude oil sales to the government account. Remember how all these processes could not have been hidden from the Central Bank, yeah? Well, Sanusi, who was in charge of the Central Bank at the time, said, there was no payment and if there was, the central bank had no record of it. So we now have an issue of missing money, about $50 billion. This scandal was so serious that several committees were set up in the National Assembly to investigate the matter. But day by day, the truth slipped away until the country no longer remembered the story. I guess other scandals emerged and Nigerians moved on as usual. Same thing had happened in the case of the $6.8 billion reported stolen by the NNPC fraud. It would later be discovered that bribe money secured with illegal crude oil deals were used to fund the 2015 general elections, an election that ushered in the administration of a former commissioner for petroleum who was in charge of the NNPC when his first scandal happened in 1976. Also a one-time military head of state, Muhammadu Buhari. When Muhammadu Buhari became president of Nigeria in 2015, he made himself the Minister of Petroleum. This was bizarre, but then, posing as Mr. Integrity meant he was better suited than any other person to handle the country's oil wealth. However, a few months down the line, the president named Mr. Ibe Kachuku as Minister of State for Petroleum. I don't know what this means probably just a figurehead position, but hold on, same Mr. Kachiko was also the GMD of the NNPC. Even so, he was not to last in that position, as Buhari quickly replaced him as GMD of the National Oil Company with one Mr. Maikanti Baro, who just happened to have worked for so long in the NNPC. This change then left Mr. Ibe Kachiko as the Minister of State for Petroleum. With this change, trouble sneaked in through the back door. In August 2017, the Minister of State for Petroleum, Ibe Kachuku, sent a memo to President Muhammad Buhari detailing several alleged misdeeds of Mr. Maikanti Baru, including the unilateral award of hefty oil and gas contracts totaling about $25 billion without the knowledge and approval of the board. He also accused Mr. Baru of insubordination. Kachuku was not just the Minister of State for Petroleum, he was also chairman of the board of NNPC. After sending this memo to the president, Mr. Kachiko visited Asurok to meet with President Buhari to discuss further. But despite the weight of the allegations, no government official reacted publicly to the claims and the $25 billion contract were allegedly awarded to a certain cabal. Mr. Baru's response to the allegation was that the law did not require a review or discussion with the Minister of State or the NNPC board on contractual matters. However, the same Baru said the president was aware of those said contracts and gave the go signal. But the shocker in all of this was that when Kachuku went to discuss these allegations with the president, he wasn't granted audience. He only met with aides to the president and that was it. Remember Buari was Minister of Petroleum, so he met with the GMD of the NNPC and they decided on appointments and contracts without the knowledge of the Minister of State for Petroleum nor the NNPC board. As a matter of fact, I've searched everywhere to see Mr. Buari's response to these petitions against his appointee, but I found none. But there's more to this story. A few weeks down the line, after abusing each other on the social media and all, both men, that is Kachiku and Baru, were seen in a video laughing and sharing a joke. Guess who the joke is?
Nigerians. While debate over the $25 billion contracts was still in the air, no one was answering questions about the whole shady deal, but now we see the accuser and the accused sharing a good laugh. Remember the NNPC scandal of December 2013 during Good Luck Jonathan's administration? The $49.8 billion was neither found nor ever looked for again. The matter was laid to rest after one person was punished. The victim was of course Sanusi who was suspended by Jonathan for being the whistleblower. But wait, more relaxing here, there is another scandal I want to tell you about. You see, the NNPC as an organization is the symbol of corruption in Nigeria. Now, I'm not just saying that. A senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, revealed in a shocking video that the NNPC used 50 billion naira to install a software which it claimed to have acquired in 2015. This software would enable the NNPC to monitor and track all oil tankers loading fuel in Nigeria. Now, Here's where it gets interesting. Same NNPC has been crying every year lamenting oil theft. The technology was apparently abandoned as soon as the installation fees were paid. According to the NNPC, 400,000 barrels of crude oil are stolen daily in Nigeria. According to Falana, it turns out Nigeria is the only oil producing country that has no meters installed to know how much oil is being produced daily. In February 2020, the Directorate for Petroleum Resources, that is the national organization in charge of petroleum resources in Nigeria, told the whole world that the daily consumption rate of gasoline, that is petrol, the car fuel we use in Nigeria, was 38.2 million liters daily. Then something ridiculous happened about 15 months after that revelation. The NRC released a statement saying that the daily consumption rate of gasoline in Nigeria is now 102 million liters, an increase of 168%. This was the most ridiculous thing I came across when researching this video. I mean, this is crazy. How is an increase from 38.2 million to 102 million under 15 months possible? I genuinely want to know. Two months after this embarrassing claim by the NNPC, the Minister of Petroleum Resources, who of course is the President of Nigeria. Oh God, this is painful to imagine. Anyways, the Minister for Petroleum Resources, Mr. Buhari, ordered the NNPC to reduce the figure from 102 million to 60 million liters. Look, I'm seriously trying not to laugh here, but it's not working out for me. This reduction was done and the official figure now reflects 60 million liters. But given a few months, something else happened. The new GMD of NNPC, Mr. Kiari, said in a press conference that about 40 million liters of gasoline was being smuggled out of Nigeria daily. <laughs> I, are you kidding me? Is this some kind of comedy or what? 40 million liters. I'm sure you're thinking, surely there's an end to all of this. Surely someone goes to jail and the Nigerian people are vindicated. Well, the wait goes on. In July of 2022, the president of Nigeria, who is also the minister of petroleum, Mr. Buhari, as you all know already, unveiled a new and rebranded NNPC. This is like the third time this very organization is being rebranded. Remember it was formerly NNOC, then NNPC. Now it is going to be NNPC Limited. But who owns the shares? The Ministry of Oil and Petroleum Resources owns the NNPC shares. This transformation from a corporation to a limited liability company only seeks to mask decades of scandals and corruption. If left to continue like this as a private company, millions of lives could be ruined. But how do we hold them accountable? You see, the logic behind the rebranding of the NNPC and what it stands to serve to a nation with over $80 billion of foreign debt is beyond me. And I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but talking about debt, it will interest you to know why the Nigerian government is always broke and looking for loans to fund their annual budget. It is another rabbit hole I found myself in, digging through the government's records for the past four administrations. That video is already in production and depending on when you are seeing this, it may already be available on the channel. Do well to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any uploads. Trust me, I have interesting things I want to show you in the upcoming weeks. In all honesty, I pray and wish the Nigerian people soon realize what is going on before things get out of hand. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.